What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Great Dandy Villain Saga. Tonight we're on episode... What is it? Episode tw 11? Episode 11 of Season 2. Um, what happened last time? Let me already get boom. This is last episode, episode 10, on the screen. Um, I don't have too, too much to talk about, though... What a fire episode. Let me just start with that. Um, seeing... I mean, we really... We've gotten a little bit of Canute before, but for Canute to come in and poison his brother like that, who was actually way kinder to Canute than I ever expected, um... I honestly did not, like, for them to have a good relationship was the biggest backstab to me, or the biggest, you know, twist to me. Um, but yeah, for, for Canute to be poisoning his brother, uh, following this, what, the curse of the crown from King Sven is just, what a development, right? What a, it's crazy, because, like, Thorfinn's on the up and up, and it looks like Canute's on the, the down and down, right? Uh, there was a very specific point of this that I liked, where I, I can't find the line, but I, I had it a second ago, of, like, ambition. That they used the word ambition. I think the king said it to, said it to Canute, or, like, the, you know, Canute's uh, delusion of the king said it to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ambition to rule as king of all the North Sea. Like, because usually ambition's, like, something that has a very positive connotation, like a good thing. It's good to be ambitious. It's good to strive, you know, live your dreams, make it into reality, that kind of thing. But, like, the use of it here of being, like, this is, like, an over-ambition. This is an ambition that's, like, hurting your brother and, well, hurting, killing your brother and is a curse. Like, you're cursed by your ambition. I feel like that's such an interesting parallel to, like, the bloodshed that Thorfinn's going through. Where it's, like, this is unchecked. This ambition's unchecked. It's a, and, and the, the, um, stubbornness, or not even stubbornness, but just the the use of this ambition has become a curse because it just is more and more and more um to the point of doing pretty you know villainous type behavior right poisoning someone that's always been good to you and for the sake of ruling their kingdom when you already have an entire kingdom not necessarily the best thing to be doing morally one might say uh, especially when it's done out of like not an actual problem but just the eventuality of a possible problem two kings would eventually cause trouble like i mean you don't know that you're just I mean, if one of the kings is you and you're going all crazy, then yeah, you're. I guess that might be true. But um, paralleling that with Thorfinn, where it's like Thorfinn is checking his violence, right? Um, Knut's out here with unchecked ambition, but Thorfinn is going through the process of pulling back his violence to what I assume where he's going to land, because it's kind of where Thor's was at, was just minimal violence required, right? You have an issue. There's a bunch of guys on ships and your ship and there's arrows, right? You have an issue, he doesn't immediately go to the sword in episode like one or, or like two or three or four of, of season one. He doesn't just go to the sword and start killing people, he, just, he punches people, he doesn't kill anyone. And then when Oskalod squares up, he, he realizes, oh, like my fists aren't enough, I need to draw my sword. So it's always based off of the minimal required. It's very restrained and controlled. Um, and I think Thorfinn with, I mean, him punching man in the face, the retainer in the face... I mean, that was done out of anger. That was an unchecked emotional move, very hot-blooded. And Thorfinn, that's what he's like, I can't like, I can't do that anymore, you know? That's not how I should be anymore. Uh, on top of killing a lot of people previously, right? That's just the most recent example. Um, but it really, I think, comes down to a, a withholding, um, a self-imposed restriction. Not even restriction, but just withholding I like um check i like like checks and balances kind of thing um the the perfect i have a, i had a word that i liked a lot more but i think i'm i think i've lost it um restraint works all right just those traits with with the using that idea on traits that while sometimes are good can can re, can kind of spin off into being something bad because like if he if you were to check canute's ambition restrain control canute's ambition um and he just rules over England, right, doesn't try to extend out to Denmark, then he could cause a lot of good. I mean, I think he had the potential, and, like, Oskalad believed in there being, like, in Canute being a good king. Um, but, and I mean, it kind of depends. Is a good king one that is super ambitious? Maybe, maybe. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I'm just, where's that shot of the marching? Yeah, right here. This is insane. Old Canute on the throne with the giant tree behind him. And, like, you know, people flying through the air on horses, kind of like a Valkyrie thing. Or, like, Valhalla kind of thing. 
This right here. I know it's going to cause the destruction, right? It's ruin. You are bringing ruin in your conquest kind of thing. Um, It's just because it's unchecked, right? That's, I think, a really interesting parallel we can bring. And there was a really good comment as well in the last episode that was kind of on that. Hopefully I'll like, put it on the screen or something. Of the there's even like a there's a ton of parallels between canoe and thorfinn and i think i mentioned a few of them but like like the two dads thing where um canoe had his like adoptive dad that kind of took care of him adoptive is not i don't know if adoptive is a perfect word for the canoe situation but he had like his father figure that took care of him and then his actual dad and he liked one of them and he didn't like the other uh, and then we go over to thorfinn and he had his actual dad who he liked and then his adoptive dad you know, Oskolod, who he didn't like. Um, he really didn't like Oskolod, if it wasn't obvious. And so, like, that connection, and then they kind of both are going different ways with, like, this, with their, how they deal with the issues ahead of them. I mean, Canute is, without res restraint, just poisoning and, you know, making moves on potential issues, whereas Thorfinn, I mean, in a, in a, in a mini fit of anger, when a guy destroys all his crops he punches the guy and he's like i can't do that anymore right he's pull he's restraining and pulling himself back just to just to what's necessary um and i love the you know the i don't have any enemies philosophy as well like works so well with thorfinn in that regard that's just like it's it's not about it's not that personal it's not that uh, emotive it's very controlled where if i label you my enemy then like i could do horrible things to you without without care you know because you're my enemy um without thinking about it Whereas if I don't label you my enemy, then I can just deal with you as required. And it's a lot more like logical um, and and smart in that way. I just, man, it just works so well. So I'm, I'm excited. Oh, I didn't even talk about any of this. Just what a nice, what a nice opening to the episode. Considering that the last episodes have been like Thorfinn falling into his inner pits of despair, crawling out of it, not even crawling, but screaming and tearing out of it. Uh, it Embrace, you know, seeing Oscalot in the blood pits in his mind, and then Einar, of course, of course, was fighting like five other men, um, just pissed beyond all belief about his crops being destroyed because that's, you know, he knows how much of a weight that is. Like to go from that to just the boys are chilling, open skies. We cle we cleared the full forest where you know the bromance, and then on to make it even better, Kittle shows up and says, "Hey." Um, maybe you guys can just turn into my retainers once I get back. Like, I think, I think we're good kind of thing. Like, I forget his exact things, but it was on when I get back, which is a problem, of course. And I talked about how that's going to, that's probably foreshadowing for something bad happening to him. What'd you say? Y'all have worked hard. What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? Exactly. Just that you won't have to be slaves anymore, though. Uh, yes, probably free hurry. He says, mm, that's good. I like that. I'll give you a little discount. That's how we worded it. That's how we worded it. Once you're done sowing the seeds, once you're done sowing the seeds on his return, right? Which means homeboy ain't returning. Or if he is returning, it's going to be in a different situation because there's no way it's that easy. Or maybe it will be. Honestly, what if what if we do have Thorfinn and, and Anar go free? Um, but they like that might even make their decisions they make resonate even more with their stories right because i mean thorfinn if he gets embroiled in some sort of conflict um because i do think that conflict will come to thorfinn to, te to test his philosophy if he gets embroiled in some sort of conflict if he's a slave versus versus if he's free i think will kind of show off like the devoutness for what he fights for you know um it we using that like minimum like to the minimal degree of violence possible kind of thing but it's like if he were to be a slave and he kind of has to fight then that's one thing but if he's free and he chooses to fight but he also does it using the least force responsible or like required then that i think is could be even hitting a little harder though we'll just really have to see where Kitel like what happens to Kitel. um if his his journey will go well considering what we saw with canoe you know things are not things are not stable to where uh you know, Keto's going. Also, Omar. Bro, why you look like that? I just, the spikes get to me, man. I didn't even, I noticed the skull belt last time, but this little cloth spike shirt. Come on, man. Man is not looking that fly, okay? 
Um, this Bible verse also went so hard. What a good line. I literally, I think I did it after the episode. I immediately go. Oh no, I think I did it during the episode. I don't even remember. But I was go. I was googling this chapter and trying to like get the context of it. I don't. I don't think I really got a grasp on it when I did that though. Um, your boy gave it a good Google search before before re giving up using the least or let's call it the least minimal required effort. Okay. Get in line with uh, Thorfinn there. Uh, we still do, of course, have the Arnheide thing going on, like where she doesn't have a plan to be free. That's gonna come up. That's maybe a reason for us to stick around once we're free. Become retainers, perhaps. That was, you know, um, directly posited. But yeah, I kind of want to just jump into this episode. Um, I'm excited to see. I don't know if we're gonna... I could see us not going back to Canute because we have kind of just dropped in with Canute and then gone to Thorfinn, gone to Thorfinn, gone to Thorfinn, and then dropped in with Canute. But I'd be fine with just sticking with him for a minute to see how this all resolves. Like, how does the poisoning go? Does he have to keep, like, sympathy lying and feeling that guilt and feeling that stress? Are we going to see um, Kita, like, show up in Canute's perspective? I don't know. We'll see. Episode 11, let's get it going. Um, I am, of course, drinking a Dr. Pepper cream soda. And let me take a sip. Let me take a sip. Get yourself a drink. Get yourself a snack. Um, episode 11. In fact... I'll start the episode and then I'll sit so that the motorcycles can do their thing. Episode 11, this case going in. A three, a two, a one. Bang! Wonderful. A wonderful beverage. Okay. We gotta focus. We might be in Canute land. This looks like the Canute area. Kings and Swords. That sounds like a Canute title. Yep. We are. Wait, His Majesty? Whoa! He's practicing. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Okay, Knut. Ow. To make this a public display is really interesting as well. Yeah, like that's a good way to get like some morale. That their king actually are making moves. Okay, Gunnar, yeah. What's up, Astrid? Yeah, he'll know to, like, pull any hit. Yeah. I mean, still, to do it with real swords is so... is crazy. Good way to good way to say it. Royal blood has awakened. Wow. She's getting a read on him. He's really pushing himself. I'm sure she means that in more, like, like even mental stress is really getting to him. It's more of like an emotional pain as well. Mmm. Both your enemies and subjects. Were you trying to show off? Show off to the girl. Show off to his sister. That's funny. Oh! 
Good play, good play. Well done, Kadoo. It did work. That's my boy right there. He's a he's a cunning king. He's very cunning. Yes, sir. That was the point, though. Yeah. It's crazy. There were gashes in his helmet as well, so I think he got lightly stricken. Or it could be someone else's helmet, but it does, you know, I would assume that that's just his. This guy. Dang, Canoe. Dang. Is that a bath? Oh, no, it's not. I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> Key tail, I know that guy. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. He doesn't have them, bro. Bro, are Canute and Thorfinn gonna fight one day? Again? And I only say again because Thorfinn made that one cut, you know? Good concern. That's true. Not good optics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He ain't got enough. He doesn't even have all of England. He just has that chunk. By just taking it? Yeah. Wow. Just to station that, that force. So he, man, he gonna make a few people really mad rather than everybody a little mad. I feel like that's kind of the idea here. I'm their conqueror and a conqueror and a Dane the English. Oh, so you need that there. Gotcha. Okay. I was gonna ask, like, what's keeping you there? What's what's keeping that army there? I guess that's fair. Ooh, that piano! That piano, dude! Oh, the OP! I was about <laughs> I forgot we haven't even heard it yet. That's crazy. Dude. Uh, Vinland Saga's piano tracks hit so hard. Just out of nowhere, it hits me with the... Like, oh my goodness. Dang. I mean, that's pretty fair, I think. Like, it's just, it's just a tough spot. I mean, it's a tough spot. He's doing what he's got to do. But also... It's just... It's just brutal. I mean, that... What, requisitioning land? What does that mean for... I mean, how bad would that be? 
mean, because okay, so Kito loses his land, right? Is the, it would be the requisitioning. But I mean, if your king shows up with the, with, well, but his army's still in England. So he probably doesn't have a huge force here. But Kito doesn't either. That's the entire point. That's why it's even a, a remote option for uh, him. But he does have Thorfinn and, you know, and perhaps the capacity to somewhat raise one. But with what money then, you know? Well, the money that's freed up from not having to pay the king anymore. Because that was kind of the point. Man, are we going to have a situation where Kito is forced to weaponized despite his fears and then that's gonna cause like additional arnheide you know drama maybe to spell out thorfinn's get it hey okay i'll just let the show go off because it's it's really oh you already got sent here my fault what's up thorgale i think yeah what's up thorgale okay Dang, that's a lot of stuff. You gonna just give it to the new guy? I didn't I didn't realize that with Thorgil. That's crazy. Maybe Thorgil, is Thorgil, like, if fight brought out, broke out between Ketil and Canute in some fashion, then Thorgil has to choose sides? That drama is crazy. We'll see, though. I don't even know if it'll get that bad. I don't know if Ketil has the... You know, if Ketil has the, the strength to not just crumple to it. Good question. Where's that little rat? For what reason? Alright, man's 28. He wants to throw the match, he can go throw the match. Dude, look at the plate guy. Please tell me he's just watching the plate. Oh my goodness, he's not. Yeah, Omar. Are you practicing in a No, it's a guy. Okay. In the mud? This stupid spiked cloth, bro. <laughs> you see his finger? Ah! Okay, man. Ignoramus. Oh, you're actually drawing it. He's so proud to draw that. Oh. Haven't you never killed someone before? Just double check him. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> Whoa. Uh. 
man, dad, dad, I, I was, I had good pride here, man. No, don't come in. No. It's way too much, I bet. It's way too much. Kid, that kid got so lucky. Thor. Wait, who is that? Thor Gale? Oh, it's his dad. Wait, 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 wait. Are you Leif Erikson, bro? Hey, what's good with you? That's crazy. Reputable businessman. Yeah, Leif Erikson back in the back at it. Holy. I was not ready for you to pop back in. That's so that's so good. Okay. I was kind of thinking, like, this kid reminds me of Thorfinn just a tiny bit. Like, how he looks. Which almost feels... Wow, he... Ad he adopted a kid that looked like Thorfinn. Are you going to claim yourself to be Thorfinn? I would lose it. Dude, that ain't him. I'm sorry, that's the wrong Thorfinn. <laughs> I'm sorry, Erickson. Wow, wait. Holy crap. We should have had three Thorfins. So is, did Erickson get tricked or is this just him coping? I don't, okay, I don't think he was cope. I think it was just cope then. Wow. Oh, no. Oof. Okay, so there, there, it's probably just like what happened with me. Or maybe it's just complete, complete coincidence. We'll see though, let's see. Like that the kid's name was Thorfinn. This kid, I mean this other kid. Man, but what if... Is something going to happen to Keto? No. Okay, the information's been given. Wow. We could follow him back. I'm a little worried about that, but... I'm a little worried about that, but we'll see. This time, this time it's different. <laughs> That's what you say every time. Wow. Okay, here it comes. It's because we know that Canoe wants, wanted, this kind of information fell into his lap, honestly. Because he was already thinking, you know? That's, it's lucky for him. And family. He's really about to say, like, hey, 
How much does your farm make? Oh, cool. How many bodyguards you got? Oh, cool. It's my farm now. It's about to be that. It's about to be that fast. Wow, look at all that stuff. Delicious, I'm hungry now. Dang, high praise from the king. High praise from the king. Whoa, Omar, what are you doing? This is not a job interview, man. You don't get to just jump into bodyguard status just like that. What? What are you doing? Yeah, put it. That's insane thing to do. <laughs> he's really looking at him like he's so goofy. Oh no. Did he even hear him? Oh, he did. Make a cut? Okay. I'll take a whack at it. It's not a whack, man. Whack is like... The whack is like the worst way. <laughs> How long is this gonna take, dog? Okay, here we go. This is about to be the roughest toughest cut did you do make two of them three four fuck oh he's sawing you don't saw someone bro He must have done a swipe and then hit bone and just went dunk dunk dunk. I'll consult with the captain. Just like every job interview, man. Hey, thanks for coming in. We'll we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Never get a reply. <laughs> oh, Omar's sitting there. I didn't even see him because he was groveling. He's literally crying, man. Oh, okay. Dude, what? Omar, what are you smoking, man? Not the snot over the stash, man. Is Canute gonna take advantage of this? Like, what? Like, I'm just curious what Canute's gonna do, you know? Oh, this music, bro. You gonna try to use him as, like, a hostage chip in a way? That would be crazy. Dude, this music. He's like, it's like horns. It's like the horns of war, man. 
Wow, he just said the opposite of what Thorgil said. Like, he can ex he can expect things out of him. The coward to be right? Wow. I feel for them, but they must pay the price. Dude, what a lie! Are the, maybe the other farms will like rally with them or something? Oh man, it's not looking good for Keto, bro. Dude, Canute's the. I love Canute. I don't know what happened. I, well, we've seen what's happening. What's been happening to Canute? Holy crap! This guy's crazy. Oh my goodness. He's scary. He's actually so scary now. Those horns, his soundtrack, man. Dude, war's coming to the farm. The requisition is coming, man. The requisition is coming. How like how do we even stop that? Or should we even like cuz I'm thinking th we as in Thorfinn and Einar, right? Like what would they even do? Cuz like would they even be bad? Like you would do, just think about it like I don't know how medieval requisitions work. Okay, I'm not a medieval f f f f person, political ph philosopher, right? But I would imagine that it's just like the government now has this property and the people that work on it work for the government now. If it's that easy, then like Thorfinn going from slave to government worker ain't that bad. Unless he didn't get to be a slave anymore. I mean, unless he stayed a slave because Keto hasn't turned him back or something, you know? Wait, like, I don't know. It'd definitely be bad for Ketil and family, but, you know, it kind of is what it is. And Ketil and family really is just Sverkel, Ketil. Sverkel knew this would be coming. Ketil, Omar. Which is not like I'm, like, super, like, hey, let's let's make sure Omar gets the good ending. Like, I'm not exactly an Omar fanatic or anything. Don't, so, you know. Dude! Canute is scary now. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Canute is crazy. I mean, we've been seeing this, but just this this scene with the horns, I'm listening to it again. It reminds me, you know what it reminds me? It reminds me of the, um, the freaking, this is random, random reference. Um, what is the name of that track? The, a track from Disco Elysium, bro, that game. Just the horns, the ambient horns. Wow, it feels like war is right on my doorstep. That's crazy. I love that line of like, he's a fool, a foolish one. He'll expect exactly, or he'll act exactly as we expect. He'll surely act as we expect him to, surely. But contrasting with Thorgil saying like, cowardly men like you are so hard to, so hard to, the more cowardly a man is, the less predictable his behavior. But Canute as, I mean, it's crazy because Canute's been cowardly. Right? So maybe that's why he has such a good read on him. Or it's just literally just kind of IQ diff of like Canute's smart. He's cunning. He knows that he like understands people pretty well to the point of he's a really powerful and intimidating king that is out on an ambitious king's journey to make ambitious king's moves. So it could be that that's why the philosophy is different. But honestly, Canute having been cowardly in the past is probably a large part of that, right? Um, wow, dude. He really be sawing the pig, and he's about to get the job, and everyone's gonna be like, Ix you know? And Thorgel, and dude, I was not expect that was, yeah, that's gonna be wild. That's gonna be wild. <laughs> Keto is just losing it. Man, is Keto gonna see this happen in, like, Thorgel too? And, and, I mean, they're gonna realize that this is insane. But are they gonna be able to put together the whole Olmar's getting hired means really bad things are coming? Like, what, what conclusion are they going to be able to reach out of that? Because obviously, the, it, like, he's going to be, Omar's going to be used as some sort of chip, in a sense, to get, to gain the farm. Um, I don't know in what manner. I don't know exactly how Canute's going to pull that. But on it, like, having Omar as someone in your direct control, as the son of the farm you want, I mean, that's going to be so helpful. Um, like, that's getting crazy. So... Perhaps, I mean, could you imagine Keto comes back to the farm, no Ulmar, knowing the farm is going to get requisitioned? I don't know if he'll know that or not, but let's say he just figures it out, and then it's literally just like, I, Thorfinn, I, my rest of my squad, like Fox, Badger, Snake, especially Snake, we got to get ready, you know? Or is Thorgil going to be like, hey, you got to, 
they're coming for you, dog. Maybe because Thorgel, Thorgel is one to not run from it. But I, I, I imagine Kito would. I mean, to some degree, I'm curious if Kito would just roll over unless somebody told him not to it hard enough, which would have to be Thorgel, I think. Or he shows back up and Zverkel comes in and spits bars. I can see like a father son thing. Wow. Um, Leif Erikson showing up with a Thorfinn lookalike. It's so funny. I literally, when, when he first started swinging with Olmar, I was about to say, like, this kid kind of looks like Thorfinn. Like, it was like, he kind of looks like an off-brand Thorfinn. It, like, very, it barely crossed my mind, right? I think just the, probably the floating abstract thought of, huh, Thorfinn-ish. Yeah, and then it was gone. So I didn't mention it because, you know, didn't have to do with anything. But because, you know, I was kind of, because at first, you know, every time a character shows up, I'm trying to figure out, have we seen this guy before? Um, and then I was like, no, we haven't seen this, this, this dude before. Andy's losing it. Um, but then for it to actually have to do with, oh yeah, he's a Thorfinn lookalike. And so I bet Leif Erikson just projected his desire to grab Thorfinn, grab in that, in free Thorfinn and buy Thorfinn onto this guy. And that's probably just what happened. I don't think it was any like deceitfulness. Like. I assume that, yeah, I assume it's just a kid that looks like Thorfinn, that has the name Thorfinn. And so, Leif Erikson went, you know what, better than nothing, maybe the guy has amnesia. Yoinkies? I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, probably just projecting those emotions. Um, and especially with the, like, this again, like, you know he keeps looking and looking. Uh, the crazy part, though, is that this reunion, this potential key to, uh, Leif Erikson reunion, which Thorfinn's in a really good spot for it now. He, man, he wasn't at the end of season one, but he's in a way better spot for it now. Um, and yeah, like, he would know that this kid isn't Thorfinn, and I think it's just projection. Uh, that is, I think, I don't know if he has the exact directions there, because he said he would follow Kito, and he knows, like, the amount of time, but perhaps that will even get interrupted by whatever happens with Omar and Canoe, which is those plot, it's the A roll and the B roll, right? A plot, B plot, intersecting. Bro, I love a good plot intersection. And that is exactly what's occurring, which is just so phenomenal. Um, Long, long, long build up for the OP too. Long build up, which I appreciate. Um, Get, I, I mean, Canute, as, you know, as the conqueror of England, needs that standing army to maintain control. England is not enough to pay for it. That's why he wants Denmark. Denmark, now that he has it, needs to levy the economy there, either through tax or through requisition, I guess, um, to pay for that standing army in England because he needs to want, hold on to both. Or so the crown commands. Crazy, I mean, just crazy situation. Totally makes sense, right? I'm following it every step of the way. Um, it's just... Oh, man. I'm just a hoe for it. I'm just a hoe for it. I'm a hoe for it, man. I'm a hoe for it. Uh, Canute making smart... I mean, even the way he fights, I throw in the shield and, and using clever wordplay to gain the win, I you know, I think that's very in line with his, like, very cunning behavior he's at now. Um, you know, taking advantage of everything that he can. <sighs> yeah, this fight was fun. This was a fun practice fight. Also, man, it shows... God, Canute's changed so much. He's changed so much. Both him and Thorfinn. The quiet coward into the fierce king and warrior, and then the fe fierce, too fierce warrior into the much more restrained, quiet uh, Thorfinn. I mean, it's just the parallels are nuts. And I think they're going to go head-to-head. -head. I think we're going to have a head-to-head. Canute -head. pulls up the Thorfinn. And, I mean, it, at, at that point, what, right? Like... They just, one of them kills the other. Thorfinn, Thorfinn deals with Canute. Um, or maybe Thorfinn, as someone that was with Canute for like a large part of, Can like a good chunk of Canute's development there and vice versa, maybe they can find a common ground and, and figure something out in some way, you know? I mean, we don't even know how that's going to shape up or if it even does. So it's, it's hard to like go off on it, but the possibilities are crazy. Oh, Canute. You nefarious little Canute. Yeah, I just... What I'm thinking is, like, the requisition of the farms, Kito's farm, right? Where... Wh how could we not just roll over to the king demanding this, right? How wh how does this turn into a conflict that embroils Thorfinn um, and the farm as a whole, which we've grown attached to, like, a lot of the characters, right? It's just gotta be... For some reason, the answer is no. Um... 
which I think there's there's ways we could find that, right? I, mean, I don't know, Sverkel, maybe, you know, um, Thorgil, maybe freaking Olmar says something, but, because, you know, I am still thinking that, um, that Keytail is one to be very, I mean, cowardly, right? That was kind of, We've seen that before with the whole Iron Fist story, you know, that being all fake. So where is that going to come from is a fun question. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll find, there's, there's spots it can come from for sure. Um, the emotional stress that puts on him that he then uses Arnhide for, I mean, is a good catalyst for a lot of drama with Arnhide, with his wife, um, with, uh, Anar, you know, um, cause you know, Anar and Arnhide are, you know, feeling good. You know, that's a, that's, that's my ship right there. So that's like, that's crazy, crazy, a crazy way to like blow that back up. Um, man, Anar, or not even Anar at this point. Then, and then, but well, then the question comes, how do we even defend the farm? Like if we need to defend, if we want to say no, how do we like actually say no? Um, as the first farm to be requisitioned, it could be a rallying point for like the people of Denmark. This new king comes in and now he's stealing our farms. Like we're going to rally behind the first because if the first falls, then like any of them could fall, you know? So it could be like a rallying point for like a group of disgruntled Denmark people. That would make a lot of sense to me. Um, in which case that puts, I mean, Thorfinn and Snake at the helm, I would say. Um, cause I mean, Snake, Snake's, Snake's seen Thorfinn and seen how Thorfinn, you know. So I could definitely see them maybe rallied by the other farms that are being targeted and the people of Denmark as a whole, rallying them all and standing against Canute as these two parallel, parallel journeys have been going on. They come to a helm together. Um, and then, man, the opportunity for Canute and Thorfinn to meet again having changed so much for Thorfinn and um Leif Erikson to meet Leif Erikson gets a huge reso resolution to you know episode one two three four five out of Vinland Saga season one I mean the possibilities are quite frankly endless which is just a wonderful spot to be in but yeah what a fire episode episode 11 it's really heating up now I'm actually so here for it I'm such a hoe for it um, but yeah, I think that's all I got for this episode, episode 11 of Vinland Saga Season 2. On to the next episode 12, should be exciting. Of course, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, 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 or join the Discord and talk to me or other. Vinland Saga fans there, but until the next episode, that's it. I'll be seeing you then. Peace.